Hi, welcome to Virtual Gold Podcast, a series of audio stories, interviews, play readings, and anything else that might take our fancy, presented by Western Gold Theatre and featuring some of the best theatre artists in Canada. Western Gold Theatre is the premier company in the country solely focused on sharing and celebrating the talents of senior professional theatre artists age 55 plus. The way we see it, theatre is not a job where you punch a clock daily and then collect a gold watch on your 65th birthday. Theatre people do not retire. Like good wine or a robust stew, we get better with age. As we simmer, our flavor deepens. We are more nuanced. And one thing is for sure, older people are the best storytellers ever. We believe creativity has no expiry date, and we're doing the COVID pivot. How can we adapt to the new normal, bring live theater to you in a gathering restricted world? That's the question. Until our shuttered doors are open again, and you are able once again to join us in our house, we, instead, come to yours. That's the answer. Virtual Gold Podcast. So sit back, grab a cup of tea, a glass of wine, or whatever you choose. Tuck your feet up, listen, and enjoy. In today's episode, Audiences will be treated to a Loot for Christmas by Susan Adams, a whimsical tale inspired by the story of endangered yew trees, hundreds of years old, which were cut down in the forests of BC and Washington for taxamine, a precious pharmaceutical enzyme. Like African elephants poached for their ivory, the bark was stripped, but the rest of the tree was discarded. The wood was stockpiled in a lumber yard, destined to serve as fence posts. A Loot for Christmas recounts the extraordinary journey of a Pacific yew tree's transformation. Read by Anna Hagen, accompanied by Clive Titmus on harpsichord and lute. There was life here, before the shopping malls, before watches that beep and concrete trucks, before vacuum cleaners and dryers and squealing tires, before the plastic whirring telephones and candy bright neon. There were footprints here. Shed the growling and grinding, scraping, peel away the snick and rattle to listen to the old sounds. Hear the leaves breathe, the water droppling in a calm pool. Feel the rare and precious quiet. In this shushing green place near the sea, there grew a wonderful tree named Emily. She was an elegant, just the right height sort of tree with glossy bright needles that fanned out like thousands of stars. Emily belonged to the distinguished family of yew trees which spread for many miles around and this was a source of great pride to her for she knew that although yew trees are lovely on the outside their chief and secret attraction lies in the ivory stripe of wood under their bark emily knew she was beautiful inside through many seasons, Emily lived and grew happily in the forest. Birds twirdled and cheeked in her branches, searching between the needles for bugs to eat. Rodents chickered at the birds. Baby squirrels frisked and plunged headlong down her trunk, as they sometimes do just for fun. In the spring and summer, sunshine kissed Emily's top branches, and she grew taller and stronger. The cool air of autumn made her sleepy and she drowsed through the winter rains. If the sighing wind awakened her, she would snuggle her roots deep into the earth and fall asleep again. Sometimes large furry shapes would rumble their ancient knowledge through the trees. Other times the graceful deer would stretch and spring at the edge of the wood, flagging their white tails and eating the soft plants 
plants which carpeted roots and stones. After a while, in the warm seasons, Emily could hear the sounds of people. Children singing and crying, bigger people talking, feet rustling among the bushes. Gradually, more people came and they stayed near the forest, using some of the trees for their houses. Emily had seen many changes in the forest while she lived there, and she liked the people. They seemed busy and interesting, full of new ideas. One day, the people cut a big pathway into the forest, and there appeared machines larger and louder than the oldest pears. Soon, men began to cut and saw at some of Emily's neighbors. Not being chatty by nature, trees preferred to touch branches and whisper through the breezes. So, when Emily heard her cousin cry, goodbye, and thud on the earth, she became afraid and her heart would froze. What was happening to her home? A moment later, she creaked as a woodsman began cutting off her branches. Oh, my beautiful needles, she groaned. I'll have to grow them all over again. But Emily would not grow any more needles. Before she could collect her thoughts, an axe cut deeply into her trunk. There was more buzzing and hacking, a heavy push, and she was lying on the ground. Well, this feels awfully strange, thought Emily, who had stood upright all her life. How will I manage without my roots? How will I drink? The large machine began to drag Emily across the ground and she became quite dizzy. She had always lived in one place and this sort of motion was not entirely pleasant. Still, she felt reasonably well, all things considered, and she was becoming quite sleepy as she did in the winter. Maybe it would be good to have a rest now for a while. The motion became rather relaxing, slowing. Very long time later, Emily awakened in a warm, dry place. Yellow sunshine touched her. She was lying on her side and her bark had been peeled off. Not only that, she'd been split in two from top to bottom. It's a wonder I'm still here, thought Emily. But she felt rested and unafraid. Eh? What's that you say? Emily felt the wood of another tree next to her own. Oh, you're awake. Welcome to the workshop. Who are you? Emily asked, puzzled. And what is this place? What's a workshop? I'm Spruce, replied the other tree. From very far away, across the big sea, people respect me for my fine grain. Oh, yes, I see. Emily said politely, although she preferred her own richly colored wood. And this is boxwood and ebony, the other continued. We're all in this together. I, too, come from far away, breathed ebony, where the air is hot and bright. She was sitting on the shelf above Emily, smooth and black as a raven's eye. Welcome. Boxwood said, blushing with shyness. I'm happy to meet all of you, replied Emily, who hadn't had any conversation in a long time. My name is Emily, of the Yu family, she couldn't resist adding. But why are we here? We're lucky to be here, Spruce answered darkly. My brother ended up as a fence post, but my cousins have been in many workshops all over the world. My family's been in the business for years and... Oh, he loves to brag, interrupted Ebony. The craftsman is glad you're here. He looked a long time for such a fine, straight stripe. 
You're very beautiful, ventured Boxwood. Now it was Emily's turn to blush. The craftsman's name is Antonio, Ebony continued. He's going to join us together to make music. He's famous, but poor, Spruce added dryly. Emily was bewildered. What is music? Music? laughed Spruce. Why, it's the wind in your boughs and the water runnling in the spring. It's the screech of bright feathered birds, Ebony whispered, and the knacking of teeth. It is fire in the night. It is soft air heavy with the fragrance of flowers, and breathless quiet before the snow falls, remembered Boxwood quietly. It's the smell of earth. It sounds like home, said Emily, remembering too. Just so, agreed Spruce, who was old and experienced. Music is like home for all of us. But how do we make this music? Do we sing? Emily asked. In a way, replied Spruce. Antonio the craftsman will join us together. We all have a job. I will be in front holding some strings at one end. I will vibrate with the sound so everyone can hear. It's my close, even grain, you know. Yes, we know, sighed Ebony. Boxwood here, he's strong and light, so he's going to hold the strings at the other end, and I go in the middle. Antonio's fingers will dance on me. Emily, you will be the most beautiful part, said Boxwood. You will bend into a graceful arch to hold us together. In your curve, the sound will blend and grow. And so it happened, each step slow and exact. With care, Antonio bent and shaped Emily's wood to show her color to advantage. Into spruce, he carved a many-sided weaving pattern that made Emily think of snowflakes drifting in her old forest. Ebony, he flattened, smoothing and polishing her satiny grain until she glowed like an exotic gem. And Boxwood, most surprisingly, was whirled around very, very fast many times. He emerged dizzily as a set of pegs with oval tops, each one a little smaller than the last. All during the summer and fall, Antonio worked, and into the early days of winter. Mostly he was patient, sometimes he was frustrated. Always he loved the wood. Slowly he joined Ebony and Spruce, Boxwood and Emily into one. They became a family. They became a loot. As the days grew colder, Antonio's town became busy with preparations for Christmas. People hummed as they decorated trees and houses with garlands and lights, holly and sparkling ornaments. Grown-ups baked cookies rich with cinnamon and fruits. Children dreamed of Christmas and filched some of the cookies. Dogs noticed a distinct improvement in the table scraps. Grandparents sang and told stories and wrapped parcels in bright paper. In the workshop, great progress was made. Antonio fitted and polished, concentrating, always careful. He knew this was one of his best lutes. Soon there would be a concert of Christmas music at the church nearby, and he wanted to play this lute. But he would not rush through the final steps. He knew the quality of the finished lute depended on his care and skill at this stage. He smoothed and varnished Emily's new shape until she was dazzling. He tied frets around ebony so that each note of music would sound clearly. He anchored the strings on a bridge on spruce and wound them around boxwood, stretching them tightly. And finally, he plucked a string. <gasps> Emily gasped. She felt the sound all along her grain. It was wonderful, like sunshine in summer. 
Antonio played another note, deep like the woods, and he smiled. Soon there were many notes. Spruce vibrated, boxwood held true, and ebony shone under Antonio's fingers. Emily was so happy she couldn't believe it. This was earth and wind and stars all together. This was music. That night, Antonio wrapped the lute and put it in a special case. He took it out of the workshop, out into the cold night. They were going to the concert. When Antonio got to the church, it was quiet and empty. He took the lute out of its case, tuned it with care, and left it out to get used to the large, cool room. Some people came in, and soon there were many. Lights were turned on and candles lit. The air grew warmer. People talked and laughed. At eight o'clock, a hush fell. Antonio, no longer in his work clothes, but dressed in a good suit of black, walked slowly to the front of the room. He sat and opened his books of music and adjusted the tuning pegs a little. Antonio began to play. In the quiet large space, the sounds began to bounce and bloom. Some were low, some glittered or sighed. All were beautiful. The people thought of the forest and the sea and remembered Christmases from the past. The old man thought of his fine new hat. The young man thought of his good old dog. One old woman thought of the man she loved and the warmth of his arms around her. One young woman thought the same. The little girl thought of her rabbit's soft ears. She would sing to him later. The caretaker nodded his head. The artist had a new idea for a painting. The resident mouse realized that tonight there would be cookie crumbs in the church hall. While Antonio played, the notes gathered and grew into ideas, memories and futures beauty outside of time. Emily felt the music inside and thought of her old home and of all the music still to be made. More than happy, she was transformed because that night Emily understood music. As the concert drew to a close, Emily joined together with all of the people as they sang the old words. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how evergreen your branches. How cool when summer breezes blow, how bright beneath the winter snow. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how evergreen your branches. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, of all the trees most lovely. Each year you bring to me delight, gleaming in December's night. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, of all the trees most lovely. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of A Lute for Christmas by Susan Adams. Fun fact, when Clive Titmus heard of the wood that was discarded, he seized the opportunity to use the unexpected resource wisely. And with it, he created a series of instruments. One of these was a lute, and it is this very lute whose body is made from that same irreplaceable you that you heard Titmus play today. Performed by Anna Hagen with musical accompaniment by Clive Titmus. Editing by Stephen Bullitt. This podcast has been presented to you by Western Gold Theatre. 
Look for our next Virtual Gold podcast episode coming soon. And check our other Virtual Gold COVID Pivot programs as Western Gold presents a series of free online presentations, podcasts, and workshops to help keep you engaged and entertained. Look, listen, learn. www.westerngoldtheater.org Located in Vancouver, B.C., we thank the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations for sharing their beautiful lands with us. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please consider making a donation by visiting our website at www.westerngoldtheatre.org. Thanks to our many supporters and donors. The Canada Council for the Arts. BC Arts Council. BC Government Community Gaming. City of Vancouver. The Vancouver Foundation. The Hamber Foundation. The McGrain Pearson Endowment Fund. McElwain Stewart Family Fund. McLean Foundation. And the many individuals who so generously support our programming. Stay well and safe, physically distant and socially close. And remember, creativity has no expiry date. <laughs>